Hey everybody, Aaron Hayes, Hayes' is World of Math. Um, what you're about to see, I filmed last week. It is a lesson about um, dividing polynomials. And so it's a building thinking classrooms lesson. Uh, it's coming after the opening activity, which is a learning card from the material from the day before. Uh, the lesson, and we're going to try to get graphics so you can see the problems a little bit better, are just some basic dividing by monomials and eventually by binomials, building the need to show why you or uh, how to do polynomial long division. Okay. You'll see my interactions both with students and how I interact with the class. So I know a lot of you have been asking me for that. So I hope this is helpful and I'd like to do more. I apologize that some of the discussion happens off camera. I am mic'd, so you'll hear my side of it. Um, and some of my students on it, I'm going to try to get a second camera up so we can at least cut back and forth between that. But at least hopefully you'll appreciate some of the interactions. Um, let me know down in the comments and like, subscribe, comment, and all of that. And without further ado, here's dividing polynomials. All right, and we need 10 of you guys, not three groups, not 16. All right, so when you guys get up to your groups, I always say hi. Remember, who's ever drawing, who's ever writing should be being told what to do by the other person. We're going to display everything up on the board like we have been, so you guys are going to have to pull the problems off. Most slides are going to have two, two problems. So here are your teams. dun 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 dun, dun. Go. Ooh, not even a lot of mix up. All right, you got 30 of your seconds. Go. All right, so here you go. Little division. Two problems. Each person take a turn. If there's three people in your group, just rotate. You'll do the first one and the next one. Keep going, John. You're fine. Nice. Good. All right, next. Who's next? Are you jumping in here or are you just watching a redo it? All right, so you grab the pen and you do the second one there, Julio. What? I'm sorry. Group five, it looks like you remember most of what's going on. That's good. Uh, almost. Almost. What's A squared divided by A squared? A squared. Your last term. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. There you go. Hey. Ooh, fancy. I, the presentation also very nicely done. No, just the... Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> good. Yes, all right. All right, good. You guys are remembering your exponent rules. You subtract when you're dividing. Hi. Why are you sitting down? All right, let's try. Let's up this a notch. You guys can finish that one up. You guys are good. Two more problems. Rotate again. If you have three people, the person who hasn't written down yet should be writing. If it's two people, you're back to the first person. You know, somebody could be reading it to you, Max. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I threw you off your rhythm. Could be. You're fine. No, somebody else should do the next one. So rotate it out. Yeah. Are you going to apply for Vanna's white position on Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> Have you seen the game show Wheel of Fortune where they, oh, okay. She's always just like, hello. <laughs> nice. He's still working. What? He's still working. Well, you're supposed to be telling him what to do. He's not supposed to be working unless you guys tell him what to do. 
Okay, so you turn the on one screen. Okay. Now remember, you have to divide the 10x squared into each part there, people. Yes. Oh, I would be all over some rationalizing. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it's okay. Minus five over. Oh, for what? X. So X would just move down to the denominator. That's it. So uh, you, the, the bigger issue is probably the fact that you have decimals, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Group seven, not bad. Where are we at? Does what go where? Right. So you're going to have this is technically you could like undistribute it. So you could have this divided by 10x squared, this divided by 10x squared, this divided by 10x squared, this divided by 10x squared. So you're still going to divide it into everything, but yeah, you're going to have some sort of fraction in this back end. So you guys should have you got you should have four separate terms because we have four terms across the top. Since I'm dividing 10x squared into each of them, you should have four terms. Ooh, fancy! Ooh, almost 100 percent. Like I mean, the, the numbers are fine. I'm just saying it's depends on how you feel about stuff. All righty. All right, let's pause a second. Ladies and gentlemen, all right, let's come back a second. Everybody seems to be at least in the process of wrapping up stuff. So let's go over here to group four. That's you, okay? Now, for what I'm asking you to do, this is not wrong, okay? You have de they, group four put decimals, so they have 1.5x squared, 2.5x, 3, and then 0.5 over x, okay? Some of you did the x value, did the... Uh, Last set of variables is x to the negative first. Also okay. Technically not a parabola, it can be polynomial, but we'll talk more about that as we get into things. Okay. Now, the one thing which you do need to do is do, for example, what da, 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 I guess group one did, where, well, they forgot the final x, so I won't, we'll fix that. So we'll put the x down over here. However, they did everything as fractions, for the most part in Algebra 2 on in math. Decimals are only used in real life adventure problems. Okay, so unless it's a contextual problem, try to leave it in fractional form. And the other thing too is mixed numbers are now gone. I do not want to see two and one third. We're going to write that as seven thirds. Okay, the improper fractions are now proper. Well, no, they're not proper. They're appreciated, unlike what happened in middle school, okay? So, again, we're going to come back to that a number of times, so don't feel bad about that if you don't remember it. I'm just giving that, putting that out there. All right, let's try another one. You ready to up the ante a touch? Ooh. This one you may have to think a little differently on. No crying. What are your thoughts on bro? Hot dogs on um uh ketchup. I don't mind it. Because I grew up outside of outside of Chicago, so I'm fine with ketchup on hot dogs. So what are you going to do with the five? <laughs> you could, if you were going to split it up into two different parts, it would be this over this plus this over the whole thing. However, because here, let me ask you this question. If I was doing... You okay? Okay, sorry. 
32 divided by 7 plus 1. Would you divide the 7 into the 32 first and then figure out the 1? No, what would you do first? Okay. So, it's okay. You can't divide things that are being, you can't divide out things that are being added. If you're going to do it, now let's say if this, I, if I had 32 over 4 times 2, could I divide the 4 into the 32? Well, you can because your multiplication, this is a factor. So then I could turn that into 8 over 2, and then I could turn that into a 4. So as long as you're multiplying in the bottom. So the question is, how can I turn either the top or the bottom into some sort of multiplication? Oh, ah. All right, let's pause here for a second, ladies and gents. Ooh, I like what you, okay, you guys are all on the right track. Yeah. Uh, no. All right, pause, 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 pause. Okay, we're pushing you guys a little bit further here than you need to go. A couple of things. If you're, these are called add-ins, things that, I think, things, parts that make up a sum, okay? So, for example, if I had, uh, let's say, two, no, let's remove this, 8x plus 2, let's say, and I divided that through by 6 plus 2. I can't divide the 6 into each individual part. I have to do this whole thing as an 8. Okay, because otherwise you'll get silly stuff like, or like here, if I do this, I can't be like, let's say it was 8 plus 2, I can like, oh, that's going to go in there, and that's going to become a 3, so that's really x plus 3 over 2. And no. Okay? What can you divide out? The things that you can divide out have to be factors, because it has. you can only divide out things. That, what does division undo? Multiplying, okay? So the only thing that division you can cancel out, which I hate saying, I always was generally always say divide out. So if I had 3x plus 6 all over 3, if I was going to divide the 3 out, I need to divide it into both parts, even if I was multiplying this out by 2. So what you need to do in a problem like this is that you need to somehow, I can only divide this out if... I treat the entire denominator as a factor. So the question is, can I make the top equal to something that I'm multiplying by 2x plus 5? Because if I can do that, then I can divide out the 2x plus 5. So in some ways, yeah, I'm kind of we're pushing things a little differently. You guys have been doing this on all the previous problems, you've just been doing it naturally because you can divide them evenly in. You're just taking the factors out automatically. This is a little different. So what can I pull out of the two, what can I pull out of 12x squared and 30x that would leave me with a 2x plus 5? 6 and x. So now at this point, I could divide those out, not cancel out, divide out, and that's going to leave me with 6x. And this would be something similar. You should be able to factor the top. Okay? Now. All right. Now, last thing real quick, and then you guys are going to sit down. Okay? Where we're going with this on Monday is what do we do with binomials when I don't know if I can factor it or not? Or like, for example, in this case, when we've never factored, what is this going to be called on the top? A four-term, a cubic four-term polynomial, right? Okay, so we'll talk through that on Monday. So with that being said, go ahead and erase your boards. We'll head on back.